All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is great to be here. It's great to be here to tell you about the book, The Surprising Science of Meetings. So let's just jump right in. All right. There are approximately 55 million meetings a day in the US alone. When you have 55 million of something at work, a reasonable question to ask is, well, what's the return on this massive investment we're making? So I've been doing research on that and working with a lot of different organizations. And what we find is that around 50% of meeting time is a good use of time. 50% of the meeting time, folks say, yeah, I'm glad I'm there. But that also means 50% of the time, people are saying, oh man, I'd rather be doing something else. This isn't all that relevant to me. The return on this meeting investment is really quite suspect. But the good news, the good news is that meeting science exists and meeting science can truly move the dial on meetings. All right, here's what we're gonna do in our time together. There's a few pieces. So first, I'm going to tell you about some of this crazy meeting science. Then I wanna share with you some implications for you as leaders, as well as some implications for organizations more broadly. I wear a ton of different hats at the university. One of my hats is the hat of a meeting team scientist. And yes, that's actually a thing. And for the last, crazy that this is gonna come out of my mouth, the last 20 years, I've been doing research on meetings. So I have been doing all kinds of studies on this topic, and I reached the point that I said, you know what, I think it's time to try to synthesize all this evidence and to produce this book. And I wrote this book, The Surprising Science of Meetings, really thinking that no one would read it because who wants to read a book about meetings? But I was so surprised and delighted that when the book came out January 1st, on January 2nd, Washington Post named the number one leadership book. Blown away, it made no sense to me. I broke all the rules. A, my title was more than just one word. B, my title had the word science in it, which I guess is a no-no. This accolade was so exciting, not because it meant that I sold more books, because that obviously is a good thing, but as a meeting scientist, it just felt validating. And it really spoke to the fact that people were willing to consider science to address one of the most vexing problems at work. Let's collect some very, very quick data. You have three answer choices. The question is, what percentage of people complain about wasted time in meetings? All right, so I want you to clap if your answer is A, zero to 33%. <laughs> All right, B. All right, okay, don't be ashamed. All right, C. All right, thank you for that quick round of applause. I really appreciate it. That extra energy keeps me moving. Yeah, so everyone basically, most, the majority said C. No matter where I am presenting this, on this topic of meetings, no matter what country, C always emerges as the most common choice. Ma wasted time in meetings is just a common concern. There's a chorus no matter where you are. Even senior managers indicate that 72% of meetings are not productive. So you have all this incredible frustration. And at the same time, going back to 55 million. So you have 55 million meetings. All this incredible frustration. Well, you could make the case that we are both living and dying in meetings. But as an organizational psychologist, I saw this as an amazing opportunity. An perfect opportunity, right? Because if we can fix what's most frustrating to people, this is extremely exciting, especially because the elimination of meetings is a false goal. We need meetings. Meetings are essential for communication, cooperation, consensus decision-making. What we wanna do is eliminate bad meetings, not just eliminate meetings. My question to you, can research provide some insights? What do you think? Yes, yes otherwise there'd be a pamphlet up here. There wouldn't be a book. I'd be doing a pamphlet tour. 
Yes, research can definitely provide some insights. So let me share with you some of these insights. There's research that compares standing up meetings to sitting down meetings. Which one do you think does, produces better results, standing up or sitting down? All right, it's kind of a trick question. What we find is that standing up meetings and sitting down meetings actually produce similar decision quality, but the standing up meetings take nearly half as much time. Then there's research on meeting satisfaction. There is someone who tends to leave almost all of their meetings saying, that was really good. I'm really glad I was there. Want to take a guess who that person is? Yeah, the meeting leader, <laughs> right? Why not though, right? They're in control. And then the person who's second most satisfied, who do you think that is? The, okay. the person who talks the most. They also feel like it's really good. So like, I feel like this Google talk's going really well. <laughs> All right, then there's research on silence. All right, so we have two types of groups. One group is talking, the other group is in silence. And their task is the same. The task is to brainstorm, right? Brainstorm some potential solutions. And research has shown that those groups brainstorming in silence are much more effective than those groups brainstorming with their voices. 